Hello everyone, what's good? How you doing? Um, hope you're doing good. Hope you're having a good day. So, if you watched my last video, I posted um the part one, the part one introduction to uh, HTML. This is the part two. So um, basically, this is what we had so far. Um, our website virtually just displaying the um the title. Oh no, not the title. Sorry, just a heading, a header, a heading tag. And you might be wondering what a H1 is. A H1 is just called a header tag. I believe there are six of them. There is H2 and the decrease in size, H3, H4, H5, H6. And whatever tag you open with, you have to close with that same tag. H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. Um, so I go back, I refresh. You can see them H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. And there is no H7. You might be wondering, is there any? And it's good to wonder, you know. Curiosity is very good. I mean, but it's a saying that curiosity, curiosity kills the cat, you know. But in programming, curiosity is very good. So H7, let's just try it. I know there is none, but let's just try that. You can see H7 is a regular format. So let me say, all right. Welcome to my website. And I refresh it. This is meant to be H7, but they look the same, so there's no H7. So yeah, we'll just leave that there. Or let's put it in a div. A div. What is a div? A div is just a container. Um, let me write a comment here. A div is simply a container that holds elements in or let me say elements let me call them tags in our html code so now i want to put all of this in a div <coughs> uh by the way i'm actually using mozilla as my browser um i believe mozilla is lightweight i've used google chrome in the past like you see i have google chrome i have ie installed somewhere but like i use all of them when i'm testing an app but for just development i use mozilla because it has some tools that i actually like and i've gotten used to so i'm using mozilla to show the work so now you might be wondering we put our thing in it our tag our tags in the div but not in the showing interesting thing about a div is that um it's just a container it's not really visible if you don't add any style to it now let's add the style or let's add some styles let's say something like border one pixel solid choose any color you want red <laughs> that's a bit too much but oh sorry i put 10 pixels i want to make this one let's say i save it and refresh you can see this box around it that's the border if i say i want to make it thicker to refresh it sticker let's say i want to make it three now or let's say five refresh it thicker nice eh <laughs> that's good so um let's say i am not a fan i hate okay i'm not, it's not i'm not just a, not a fan i hate where your borders are looking like this and because I feel modern design, like if you go to the Apple site, Apple, I love going to their site because they have great UI. If you're wondering what UI is, UI means user interface. Let's go to their site and you can see that things are just like, let me show you. I don't know if you can see this deeply, but there's a little curve here. This is sharp because of the color that is used on it. It's not just a border. But like my point is when designing, you should try and make it um permit me to say beautiful, user friendly, looking good, and things like that. Because I see a website that's telling a story. When you're telling a story, don't just start harsh. Like let me give for example my website. <clears throat> this is my website right here. I started with just my, my, my picture. I didn't just want to start giving you colors and all. 
then when we started going i started giving like information it's like telling a story going down progressing going down giving you the work i've done so just, don't, don't just hit the users with something solid something graphic you know make them have fun on your website <laughs> uh so let's to make it curved what you do is border radius uh let's say something like five pixel uh refresh you can see now it's curved although i think the border is too thick so let's go back to three pixels refresh you see it's not looking so bad but it's okay it's okay and let's say we want to um what else can we do to this to make it not as bad as it looks um let me see yeah you can see the text is really close to this you know and that is called a padding let me say this if i say padding five pixels padding five pi padding means what amount of space do you want to have before any element comes in so let me say i pick something like padding um five pixels see the result now it pushes the text five pixels away from the border so it's not just close to um the walls of the border let's say i want to do something like centralize our text i believe that's called text align center refresh centralizes the text you can make it left text align left you can make it, oh left is the default excuse me this is the right all right you see it goes there so we'll just leave that as the default necessarily we don't need this tab i'll just give it there so that you know that we use that um what else what else yeah let's give it a bra bra background picture background color there's this is the site i go to, to get my colors i call it um i think it's called css color because if you google that not w3 schools let me say color picker Why are you showing me all of this? You know what I want. <laughs> um, let's see. Yes, yes. Uh, it's probably it's, it's not a bit risk because I go to interesting. Let's see this. Oh yes, it's probably it's a bit risk. My bad. So yeah, I come here to get my colors. So um, in our case, now these are I believe these are called these are hexadecimal codes for our colors. They're just color values. So let me say I want to use red. It's the same thing as using this value here for my color it's just that these values gives you the ability to have a wider version or a wider range of color so let me say i want um purple there are different ranges of purple normal purple will just give me something like this why is the word purple but if i use the code i can get different shades of the color i want so let's say i'd actually like that right now we can say let me say i make our border this so the border is this now it's orange now let's make the background something a little bit lighter let's say this background color this save what do we have now let's see how it looks not so bad it's okay um i believe you can also change the fonts fonts family and you have some fonts yeah uh, let's say you can pick any font you want fantasy i know what that is let's try it save let's see what it looks like not bad quite cool so yeah this is a little bit of css and this type of css is called css is known as sorry i went too far css is known as cascading style sheets so it's just a way of writing commands that make your website look better you can add pictures through css color response make your text spin make yourself your text bounce and do all fun and all sorts of things through css so this is called inline css inline css is a type of css where you write it in the elements you are styling for we are still going to work on um i believe internal and external css internal is the one where you have your css here let me say i have this here style oh, sorry no bad. it's called style and let me say i want to start all my h1s oh so this is how I'll do this because it's away from the element if i want to start my h1 inline 
I'll do this style here. Although this would only affect this H1. So if I have a different H1 here, because I'm not writing this style on it, it's not going to affect. It's just going to affect this way. If I want to write a style that affects all my H1, I'm going to do this then. And let me see. I want to say color. Let's look for a nice color. Um, let me say this pink. Um, I'm not a fan. Let's say or, or green, go on orange. I think I'm not sure, but let's just check it out. That's too bright. Uh, let's say this um, color fresh. Sorry, my bad. Fresh. You can see that this okay, this is a bad color, but anyways. <laughs> You can see that this is changed to um green, and let's say I have a different H1 now, another H1, second H1, welcome to my website to save refresh. This is also this is also green because I changed. The CSS for all the H1s. Let's say I just want to change one H1 now. I don't want to change all. There are two ways to do that. You can either do it this way and put it here. Oh, sorry. You have to add this style attribute. Style that. Just this one is changed because this H1, there's no general styling for H1s. And let's say we had it the way we had it before. So this changing all the H1s. And I want to just change this one. What I do is that I give it a class attribute. Uh, let me say first H1. A class attribute is just like an ID. You know, when you go to work, you have your IDs. Your ID was used for is used to uniquely identify you, right? That's what a class. You have class, you have ID, and I believe you have unique. I know there are three attributes. I know the hash is for the ID. The class is dot, and I think the star is for unique. I'm not sure how to research that. But anyways, for the class, you use this. I'm also going to talk on a lot more classes and all. So because I want to just edit this one we have here, and not all the H1s, I will do H1 dot first. Sorry, first H1. If I save that, it's only this one that is edited because I edited the class name not all h1s i did all h1s that has this class name so if you're a h1 and you don't have this class name you're going to be the default which is black so i will i don't want to make this video too long it's really long but i just want to stop here i'll make another video right now and just to talk on that'll be the part three of the introduction to html and i think we did a little bit of css i actually didn't plan for this but you know i just felt like why not you know why not and if you're not a fan of Russell Westbrook, that's a slogan. Why not? Yeah, so thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate this. Kindly subscribe. Please do. <laughs> thank you so much and have a good day.